the self view is a habitual way of grasping, a habitual way of seeing things. As with many of our habits, when we get used to things, we tend to think that's the only way. And it's as if we have this assumption that it's a friend or something to rely on. And halfway through the retreat now, it's good to reflect on this a little bit. Self-view actually causes us a lot of pain. We get disappointed. We get hurt. I feel hurt. I feel disappointed. I feel offended. I feel angry. And so we think it's a friend, we think the self-view helps us navigate life, but the self is always reacting. Liking, not liking. The self-view is very vulnerable to being blown around by the worldly winds. With praise it feels happy. Criticism feels dejected. Similarly with pleasure and with pain. A lot of pleasure, happy, a lot of pain, depression, anger. Good reputation, happy for a while. Criticized, fairly or unfairly. Mind gets sad. I have good fortune, some gain, again happiness. Loss, sadness. With mindfulness and wisdom, we understand that praise will turn into blame. Gain will become loss. Pleasure becomes pain. When you're praised, you'll be criticized. Even Lord Buddha had his detractors, as impeccable as he was. And so I think it's really valuable to get interested in learning how to identify less with thoughts and feelings in the body, and learning how to see these worldly winds as what they are, phenomena that change and phenomena that are unavoidable and trying not to grasp. If we don't grasp at the praise, if we don't become elated, then we're not as depressed when we're blamed. It's just this much. Praise is just this much. Blame is just this much. Pleasure is just this much. Pain is just this much. Arising and ceasing, arising and ceasing, understanding the nature of conditions. Something worth investigating. The degree to which you suffer is the degree to which you think you're a self. And we can try to work within the self-view, try to make it happy. The metta practice is very helpful for this. Metta is extremely valuable and skillful because it leads into spacious awareness where there isn't a big sense of an ego. It leads to a refined peacefulness which is expansive, so it starts with, may I be well, may I be happy. And it just becomes a pure feeling of love, 
when you maintain that at a certain point grosser sense of self falls away and all that is left is a feeling of warm loving kindness and that can then be expanded to include many other beings so it doesn't become a self cherishing special love that you just hold on to for yourself it becomes something that you expand to include more and more beings eventually all beings so this is a very powerful method for relaxing the way we grasp and expanding our capacity and identifying less with our own desires and developing a genuine empathy for more and more people and goodwill to more and more people and this is a very important valuable useful foundation a resilient sense of well-being that comes from being able to hold the metta in the mind it's very important to expand it to include more and more beings we don't take ourselves as seriously and we don't get lost in our suffering as much we become aware that suffering is a universal shared experience all beings not yet liberated have their own sad stories 10000 joys 10000 sorrows and developing empathy for the universality and dropping the sense of specialness my suffering becomes our suffering some of the masters of thailand begin their dharma talks with friends in aging suffering and death and then they begin their talk to their friends the metta is the samatha and the breath meditation can be samatha calming ventilating bringing space and coolness into the mind but another very important aspect of practice is the investigation the sense of self causing so much misery so try to find it you can investigate in many different ways is it in the sense basis so just have a look is it in the eyes is it in the ears we have to be sincere we have a look is it in the mouth where is this self you have a sincere look you can't find it in the sense basis okay have a look in the area of the heart where all the emotions roll around bang around have a clear direct look with mindfulness is there a self there where is it if you can't find it in the sense basis how about the body parts is it in the fingernails have a close look where is this self is it in the teeth is it the skin going deeper blood bones how about the brain just looking with direct awareness and direct investigation in the brain area is there a self there where is it and do these investigations sincerely and the sense of self can just fall away the latent grasping that we're so habituated to can fall away and there's an awareness of a body just as a body feelings just as feelings no thoughts we identify so much with the thoughts and when the thoughts fall away we experience a body and a mind without thoughts the whole thing becomes much more spacious and we understand the teachings that the mind has a nature of emptiness the objects arise and cease arise and cease in awareness empty awareness and then without understanding look at the feelings arising and ceasing look at the body 
constantly changing, destined for death, these things are also empty in nature. So combining some calm with investigation and trying to really look at this self that pushes us around so much, it, it loves itself, it hates itself, it, it's offended, it's hurt, it's pleased, it's exhausting if we're dragged around by these feelings. So we have to steward the healthy functioning of the personality. We have to have good sila. It's appropriate to be generous. We have loving kindness. We have empathy for suffering. But we shouldn't empathize with delusion. We have to get fierce about wrestling with delusion. If you can pull the rug from under the self-view and experience the body and mind as not being a self, what is there to love? What is there to hate? It's a phantom. It's a misapprehension. Sakaya Ditti is a view, it's a habitual way of perceiving things, it's an assumption and it's not the truth. And the more we can see things according to deeper truth, thoughts really are just thoughts, opinions really are opinions, and they're not self. The body is just a body, nearly seven billion human bodies in the world of its time. All of them made of the four elements, all of them destined to change, to stop breathing, all of them destined to return to the four elements. Which one of those seven billion beings is a real self? We have four elements, earth, water, wind, fire. We have space, all of these things arising and changing and transforming within space. Then you have consciousness. And no solid, enduring, unchanging self in any of it. And so in training, don't identify, don't pick it up, don't hold it so tightly. If you do hold it tightly, try to relax it. It's not sure. We understand that the more it's an act of compassion, the more you can see that the body and mind is not self, the more peaceful you'll feel. There's no one to love, there's no one to hate. You can experience the mind in equipoise. Understand what is equanimity, deep serenity, deep tranquility coming from wisdom and samadhi. So we have a very good opportunity and we should practice a lot, investigate sincerely. And the less that we grasp it all as being myself, the more contentment and the more satisfaction, the more well-being we'll experience.